Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Coffee and Tea with AARP, a bi-weekly conversation in with which AARP staff and volunteers talk to Connecticut decision makers about policies and programs that are of interest to older residents. My name is John Erlinghauser, and I'm the Senior Director of Advocacy and Community Outreach at AARP here in Connecticut. And I'm pleased to be joined by one of our great AARP volunteers, Jim O'Brien. And we're going to do something a little different today. Rather than have a policymaker and an elected official on, Jim and I are going to talk about Social Security in a few minutes. So thanks for being with us today, Jim. I know you do a lot for AARP, but uh, the public might not know that. So why don't you talk a little bit about what you do for AARP, and then again, a little bit about your background and uh, and uh, what you're gonna what you're gonna help us uh, moving forward to do about Social Security. Good morning, John. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, my name is Jim O'Brien. I live in Cheshire, Connecticut, and I've been an a uh, uh, volunteer with AARP for about 13 years. Principally, I have been involved with advocacy work, meaning things that uh, flow along the legislative line, laws that uh, that uh, uh, protect and make life better for us older Americans. And uh, that's what I've principally been involved in. I'm also involved with uh, electric choice presentations. Uh, I enjoy that, been involved in that for a number of years, and just recently become involved in AARP's effort on Social Security. And, uh, and I want to mention that I am co-chairing this with John Wilson, who is another a uh, longtime AARP volunteer. And uh, John not only is involved in the Social Security effort, but is also involved in Fraud Watch. And uh, uh, he's a big participant in in, uh, in that effort. Awesome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've done, what your career path was before you came, you retired and became an AARP volunteer? Yeah, for 35 years, I worked for the Connecticut Education Association. I represented teachers in uh, in their collective bargaining efforts and things of that nature. It uh, was a wonderful career, and I enjoyed it so much, and uh, uh, I am very happy to be retired. And uh, we're very happy to have you, and uh, as I like to say, you're, you haven't moved too far from your roots because the AARP office is located here in Hartford in the CEA building, the Connecticut Education Association building. So that's great, and and I just do want to put a plug in for the AARP volunteers. Jim is just, and, and John Wilson as, as well, are just kind of symbols of uh, two of the great volunteers we have that do all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, Jim mentioned a fraud watch that John Wilson does, and Jim does uh, electric choice presentations. And he does advocacy, but is a little bit modest about it. He also leads most of our federal work, which is one of the reasons why he's helping us with Social Security. So, so Jim, you mentioned again that you're co-leading the uh, AARP Social Security campaign with John Wilson. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this effort? Uh, you know, what's what are some of the goals? And then why don't you tell us what some of the goals are? Why don't you talk a little bit about the activities that volunteers will be doing to meet those goals? Sure. AARP understands completely that we Americans work hard. We pay into Social Security. We expect to get our money back through Social Security because we've earned the right to do that. Uh, Social Security is our money. We've put it in. It gets into the program because of payroll taxes on my earnings, your earnings, everyone's earnings. And it's essential for helping us cover living expenses as we age. Social Security is very important for a large number of people as one or two or three ways that people get income in their retirement years. We want to make sure that politicians protect and save Social Security over the next 10 years and beyond. If they fail to do that, benefits by uh, 2034 could be cut by up to 20%, almost $4,000 a year for the average Social Security participant. So I suspect there's going to be a big education campaign about this. And uh, why don't you talk about the types of activities uh, AARP members are going to be doing and who they're going to be targeting with those activities? Sure. Uh, right now, AARP is in the process, Connecticut is in the process of making sure our volunteers are up to speed on uh, social, the issues involving Social Security. Once, uh, and then we're going to reach out to working Americans uh, in the state to help to educate them about the benefits of Social Security and about some of the things that we're concerned about with Social Security. We're gonna uh, make sure we're at uh, 
events over the fall uh, where we can present information to people and talk to them. Uh, we are uh, in a listing um, folks to uh, organize events where groups of working people can get together. Uh, we can send a volunteer, a couple of volunteers to do some training about the future of social security, about the specifics of social Secu security, how much they'll collect, et cetera. Uh, we're, we have tables at uh, other events that uh, that uh, our volunteers will be at. Like All senior fairs and stuff. To reach out to state fairs coming up in the in the fall and almost all events that we can get in touch with and uh, get volunteers to. So Jim, how long is this campaign going to last, do you think? Uh, it, it probably up to 10 years. It's uh, uh, We're beginning now. Uh, there hasn't been a concerted effort by Congress to adjust Social Security since I think 1983, 1984, and it's time. And uh, it's going to take a lot of effort in Connecticut and nationwide, um, but we have the volunteers who are organized and ready to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's amazing because as you said uh, before, you know, if, if we don't get this fixed in the next 10 years, you know, people could be having a social security cut by up to 20%, and that's about $4,000 a year. So uh, this is, uh, sounds like uh, we're all hunkered down for the long haul on this. Now, yeah. We talked about the outreach and education volunteers are going to be doing to the public, and you mentioned presentations. So, you know, if people want to schedule a presentation on Social Security or get more information about how to how to uh, understand what the presentation is all about, or where could they go for that information? They can call Kelly Leffler, who is an employee at AARP Connecticut at 860-548-3163. And that's great. It's relatively new that AARP can have presentations requested through the website. Kelly Leffler is relatively new on staff here, but he's doing yes. a great job. And there are all kinds of presentations people can get information about when you talked about electric choice, how to, uh, people can navigate uh, uh, third-party electric suppliers. We have Caregiving Roadshow. We have Fraud Watch Network. So there's a whole host of presentations that people can uh, find out about, including Social Security by calling Kelly. So Jim, we're going to not only educate the public, but you talked about elected officials. So what do you think needs to be done? Who, who, who do we have to talk to at the state level and at the federal level in order to get this taken care of by the next 10 years? Really, the conversations with politicians is at the federal level because they control Social Security. So right now, we're not asking people to reach out with specific messages to their congressional representatives, state senators, and, uh, and House of Representatives. Uh, individuals, other than to say, to bring their attention that this is something that's important and needs to be addressed by Congress um, sooner, if not uh, um, right away. Awesome. So I can really uh, tell that uh, the volunteers and, and yourself and John Wilson are really anxious to get get the public educated, and I know we're going to do that. So, so let's talk a little bit about Social Security itself. Sure. So we we know that there are some big myths people talk about in social security. So, you know, why don't you talk about some of the the, the, the biggest myths that are out there about social security? So, you know, I mean, I, I growing up, I can remember surveys uh, where people, uh, young folks said, uh, you know, they believed in aliens before they believed that social security <laughs> would be there for them, right? right? So, so what are some of the myths that, that are out there that people should be aware of our myths and not reality? Well, probably the biggest one is that it's going broke and it isn't. Uh, it is a, a wage-funded project program. Uh, it uh, The money it takes in, it, uh, it pays out to retirees. Uh, there is a surplus uh, over almost, I think it's approaching $3 trillion now. And, but that is shrinking. And it's going to shrink over the next 10 years because there are more people retiring and we're living longer. And there are fewer people in the working uh, who are still working, um, and the benefits are paid, go into the system uh, from the from those who are still working. Um, the program is not going to go bankrupt uh, if if there's no congressional action by probably 2034. 
benefits for those who are retired could be reduced by up to 20%, almost $4,000. Uh, and at that point, uh, the, the, the money paid that's coming in will be paid out. It'll be essentially balanced. Um, but that needs to be addressed. We believe it needs to be addressed. But the problem- well, I mean, that's, that's, that's an important point, Jim, right? I mean, you know, fair mongers like to make people aware that, you know, think Social Security is going broke and it won't be there for them. And, you know, and that's sometimes is a tactic to kind of do something radical with your earned benefit, as opposed to knowing that, you know, hey, in 10 years, if nothing is done, you know, it'll be a 20% cut in benefits, but it will still be there. So our objective, right, is to ensure that we get this taken care of so there'll be no cut in benefits in the next 10 years. Anything else uh, on the myth side you want to add? Or Yeah, I, th I think another big myth is that uh, the, uh, the government takes the money coming in and spends it. And uh, that's not true. Uh, the, the money the government does use the cash that's coming in every week, every month, every year from Social Security payers. Uh, but issue, but treasury bonds are issued and those issue, those bonds pay, uh, pay interest. Uh, I think last year they paid almost $66 billion in interest on the money that, uh, on the treasury bonds that, uh, that the government issued to the Social Security uh, Trust. Uh, so the money is there and uh, um, it's, available, uh, ready to be used. Yeah, that's another one of those things where, you know, the, those that don't like Social Security as as a as a, a retirement benefit like to say, oh, the federal government's stealing all the money. So, you know, it's not really there anyway. So why are we wasting our time with this? And, right. and you, you gave a really good explanation, right? I mean, it's the money's there. Government borrows against it. The actual problem really is on the government side of the budget, not the Social Security side of the yes. budget. Yeah. So no, that, that's, that's important. The, the fund is solid. Absolutely. And, uh, two, a couple of other things that I think are, one is kind of a sideline interesting. Uh, many people think that, that congressmen um, don't pay, don't get Social Security or pay into Social Security, and they do. And they, they've they done that since 1984. And yeah. probably the last thing, myth to mention uh, right now is that uh, uh, it's better to take benef your benefit early. And the earliest you can collect a benefit, as long as you're not disabled or uh, uh, et cetera, but regular retired, is 62. And that's not that while it's possible to collect your benefit, it's considerably reduced. If you wait till your full retirement age, for most people close to my age, uh, it's, uh, it's that's 67. If you wait, the, it, the payout is longer uh, is better, you know, for the, for the rest of your life. You know, Jim, that's, that's really some great points. I mean, I used to work in a congressional office and, and we would get that all the time, you know, members of Congress, oh, you know, they fix social security if they were on it. And the fact is they do pay into it and they do get it. So that's an important point. And, and so, so are all the, all the points you made about this. And that, that's important information. And I, I'm assuming that uh, the AARP volunteer team are going to get that information out to folks. So they understand that. Yes. So, all right, well, we talked about some of the myths. Give us a few things that you think are, are important things that people should know about Social Security. I know there are a lot of things that are, are you know, untruths that are out there or myths, but there are also a lot of facts about Social Security that people aren't aware of that they should be. Well, in, in, uh, there, there are many interesting things. One is, and it comes to mind quickly, is that about 74% of the beneficiaries of Social Security today are retired. 26% are either children of deceased individuals who are collecting a child benefit, collect up to 18 years of age, or uh, 19 if you're still in high school. The individuals who are spouses of a deceased beneficiary, uh, they collect. And so that covers up to 26% of the other people collecting Social Security. So it's not just for retirement. It helps people who've had tragedies in their life continue to live and uh, uh, be able to buy food and pay their bills. Well, I could tell you, Jim, on that one, it's uh, you know personal for me. I, uh, you know, my father was 65 and retired when I was still in high school. And, uh, you know, I was he had six kids. My mother was a homemaker. They raised us. And they worked hard. And um, because when he retired at 65, I was able to get a Social Security benefit. Um, 
until I turned 18, which was, uh, uh, I actually got it for a month after I turned 18 because I turned 18 in May and I graduated high school in June. And then to go to your further your point, and I was able to get benefits. And I know it helped my parents immensely uh, in, in taking care of me uh, at that time, you know, because they were on a fixed income and, and they still had somebody that, that was dependent on them. And, you know, so uh, that's, that's an important point that uh, I think people don't get, you know, that it's not just retirees. It, it, it's, it helps people, as you said, that are widows or children of of a deceased parent or dependent of a live parent who happens to be a beneficiary of social security. So uh, that, that's an important point. And, and I, I'm glad you brought it up because it, it, it hits home personally for me. Um, another thing that, uh, that that's people should be interested in and are interested in regarding social security is how much is their benefit? And there are different ways to calculate it, but it's based on your a 35 year working history you get uh, you get uh, credits four credits for every year you work. You have to get up to uh, uh, ten credits uh, in order to qualify for Social Security, and it's that thirty five years is based on your highest level of earnings. Mm -hmm. So if you start a job uh, forty years ago at low pay and then move to something that that uh, for the next thirty five years is pays better, your Social Security is based on those higher years. Um, there's a basic benefit. Uh, the highest benefit uh, available in, in 2023 is uh, just over thir over $3,600. The average benefit uh, for a beneficiary is about $1,800 a month. Um, that's uh, in 2023. That's great. I mean, there's so much information that, that people just don't know and might not be aware of. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that... Uh, we have some great AARP volunteers that are going to try to raise the awareness level here on that. So uh, let me ask you this. Just one, one, one more thing to, oh, yeah, to please. mention, if you don't mind. Oh, please um, do. People, people also think that once they collect, begin to collect a benefit, they have to stop working. And that's not, not true. You can, you can begin to collect a benefit and continue to work. Your benefit is reduced during your working time. But then when you stop working, the reduction is added to your benefits. So it's not lost at all. Uh, it's just uh, pushed aside for a time and you get it all, um, even though you've been working and you can work up to age 70 and uh, there's no penalty to continue to work. Right. So I know AARP has this great website, aarp.org slash you earned it. Yes. What kind of information can they get there? There is a calculator, a social security calculator. People can put in their information about their wages, how many years they've worked, their age, etc., And they can get an estimate. It's not going to be an iron ironclad uh, as though it came from social security. It's going to get a pretty accurate estimate of what their benefit would be. There is a question and answer tool available. So you can ask specific questions about, hey, I am divorced from somebody who is collecting the benefit. Is there anything available to me? Those that that QA is extensive and very, very informative. And there's also a place on there you can reach out to and send an email to your legislator, your federal legislator, your state senator, or your House of Representatives. Uh, uh, elected official and encourage them to pay attention to Social Security and help advance the effort to protect it for all of us. So this sounds like it's a great tool. And again, for our audience, it's aarp.org slash you earned it, aarp.org slash you earned it. And uh, I would encourage people to go there. And it sounds like, Jim, based on what you said with the calculator and other things, this is this is not just thing for people who are on social security this is for folks of all ages and uh, uh they can get some great information that they need to know right i mean uh, so they can plan an effective retirement uh, um, that includes social security so uh you know you're our volunteer lead on this along with john wilson and you guys are going to be doing a great job and i know we have a large number of volunteers that are working on this but we can use more. Isn't that always the case? So 
always the case. Well, if there are folks that want to get involved with your effort on Social Security here with AARP in Connecticut, what should they do? They should contact AARP in Connecticut. They should call Marlissa at 860-548-3165 or email her. Just reach out to AARP Connecticut, indicate that you are interested in being a volunteer and being involved in Social Security or any other effort that uh, AARP Connecticut is involved in, and they'll get back to you. That's awesome. And I know it would be uh, great to have more volunteers. And I know you and John would, would certainly appreciate it. So, so never have enough volunteers. Never, never. And uh, you're one of our, our, our best uh, two that we have. Well, that's great information, Jim. And uh, is there anything you'd like to add uh, as we close out our program this morning? Uh, just maybe two things. One is that this effort is just beginning and it's going to be at least a 10 year effort. Two, we need all the volunteers that uh, that that we can get to be involved. And uh, and I appreciate the uh, time and attention to this matter. Thank you very much. Well, Jim, I really appreciate you being with us this morning. And I, I'm sorry that John Wilson couldn't join us this morning. I know he had another engagement, but uh, but we do appreciate the fact that you guys are willing to step forward and take on what's so important, not just for current retirees, but for future retirees. And uh, I do want to, again, encourage folks to go to aarp.org slash you earned it to learn more about the Social Security campaign. And then if you want to get any information on presentations, you can go to aarp.org slash CT. And uh, again, I'm your host for Coffee and Tea with AARP Connecticut, John Erlinghauser. And we thank you for joining us once again. And we look forward to seeing you in the next couple of weeks. Thank you.